Hi, this is Drake, and in this video, we're going to be talking about recording cues on Martin MPC and Onyx lighting software. So, cue stacks allow you to do multiple different things with faders or buttons to control what's happening with your lights. So, let's dive right in and talk about cues. Okay, as you saw in previous videos, we have our groups, we have our presets, now it's time to record some cues. So we're going to take our LED PAR group. We're going to give it 100% intensity. Now, one of the basic, most basic things that you could do is store intensity to a fader. Pretty much do this for every group of fixtures. Um, so we're going to do that right now. So we have our LED PAR. We give it an intensity of 100 using our preset. And we're going to click the record button. This again brings up our record window where we can select what we're recording if, we're, if we have multiple things in our programmer. In this case, we don't, so we can actually leave it alone. And we're going to click anywhere over here. So we're going to do fader number one. This brings up one more window. So in this window, we have cue list, chase, override, submaster, inhibitive, and timecode. These are six different types of cues. If you're wanting to just control intensity and that's it, nothing else, use submaster. That is all it is for. If you want to build a cue stack, so multiple cues after another on one fader, that's what your cue list is for. Your chase is for building chases. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Override allows you to override anything else that's currently running with a fader. Inhibitive allows you to also control certain attributes that are in cues already. If you want to get rid of that out of your cue stack, you can use an inhibitive. And time code is self-explanatory, it's all about timecode. That's for a whole nother video. So we're gonna type it in. We're gonna do LED, LED par, um, and we're actually gonna leave it at that because uh, on the fader, I'm gonna know that's my intensity. And we're gonna do submaster because this is just uh, a fader for intensity. So we're gonna click submaster, and it created it. It's right here. We're gonna clear our programmer. Programmer's clear. now. We have our LED par uh, queue here, and that also correlates to fader number one on the console. So I can actually go down here on the console, and I can actually start turning up my intensity. As you can see, the light is fading up, fading down, as I'm controlling the intensity. And you can also see it on the computer screen right here, where it says 100. Um, it's showing me what it's at right now. So 40, 11, 0. Okay, so now we're gonna go into a little bit more advanced uh, cue stack instead of a single uh, fader cue right, that we have going right here. So um, let's start with making the, the pars turn on. So we're gonna select our pars. We're gonna go to our intensity, 100. Okay, now our light is on. We're gonna click record again. And we're gonna click number two because we wanna save it to our second fader that we got here. Boom, all right, so now we're gonna type in what we want this to be called. So we're gonna call it LED Q. Now, just a heads up, you'll want to type in the number before you click whatever you want it to be. If you click it before you type it in, it'll automatically store it with a generic name and you'll have to go edit it later. This will save you a step. If you name it first, then click which Q type you want it to be. So we're gonna click Q list, and this is gonna allow us to create a Q stack. So we're going to click Q list. Boom. Stored it to our second fader. Let's clear the console. So as you can see, um, what's really cool about this hardware panel is the lighting for your fader actually changed color. So this is red for our second Q, and this is green for our first Q. On the screen here, they also match the color of the fader, which is really nice because there's no digital labels on this but you can still see what is what. Now you might be wondering, why is it at 100? Why is the fader at 100 and the par is not on? Well, it's because this is a Q stack and we actually have to tell it to go by hitting the go button here. Uh, you can also select cues by clicking around on the colors down here and use this go button that is right here. This is also a go back as well as you also have go and back built into each fader up above. 
So we're going to click go. And as you can see, it faded on our fixture. Now I can control the intensity here of that cue stack now that we ran the cue. Okay, so we want to record a second cue to our cue stack. So in the second cue, we're going to select our LED pars. We're going to make them red. The intensity is already set from the first cue. So we're going to record it to this cue stack as a second cue. So we're going to go over here and hit, click record. And we're going to go down here and click on our cue stack that we already have currently. And that is it. Our second cue is created. So let's clear the console. Console is cleared. So as you can see over here, we have Q1 and right below it, we have Q2. Now to launch that queue, again, we are going to hit go. So we can hit go here or we can hit go down here. So we're going to hit go. And as you can see, it faded it to red. Now Martin Q stacks automatically default to 2.5 seconds fade time. Uh, you can change that if you go to your Qlist values page over here. And as you can see, here's my Q1, here's my Q2, and you can see my fade, 2.5 seconds for each one. Now you can make the fade longer or shorter. You would just have to go to your edit mode, click on this, and we can make it zero by typing in zero. Now our fade time is zero, so it'll snap. This is also where you can name your cues. If you click on a cue right there, we can name this red. So now we know this cue is for turning them red. So let's go back. If we go backwards on our cue stack by hitting the back button here, it's going to fade back to our first cue, which is just turning on the intensity with our white. And we're going to go to red, so we're going to click go. And as you saw, it just snapped to red because we got rid of the fade time. So that's how you would change the fade time of each cue. Okay, so we're quickly going to talk about point cues. Now, a point cue allows you to save a cue in between two cues. So, say we have our cue stack here, we made it go full intensity and then we made it go red. And you're thinking, ah, oh, I wanted it to go blue and then red. So, a point cue is where this comes in. So, let's take our LED parts here and we're going to make them blue. And as you can see, I just changed the fixture in the programmer and it overwrit what was happening in the Q stack, even though the Q stack is still running. If I cleared the programmer, it would go right back to the Q stack. So let's go LED par blue. All right, we want to save it between Q1 and Q2. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit record. We're going to click Q 1.1. This is saving it after Q1, but it's 0.1 is right before two. We're going to click enter. And that just created another queue. So if we go back, actually, I went back twice. So we have Q1 here, which is full intensity, just our white. We have Q1.1, which is now our blue. And we have Q2, which is now our red. So point cues you can go a long ways with. You can add a ton of point cues in between. It helps for programming shows when you're trying to add stuff in, even though you already have the whole show programmed out. Okay, so let's create an inhibitive fader real fast just to show you what that is. So let's select our LED pars and let's select our intensity. We're going to make it at 100 and we're going to record this to another fader. Let's go to fader 10. So over here, as you can see, one of the six things that we have is inhibitive. So we're going to name this LED par intense for short, and we're going to click it inhibitive. And let's clear the console. So now what this is going to allow me to do is actually control the intensity of the LED par even though Q stack number two is running. So I can actually pull the intensity down. So an inhibitive fader is allowing me to control any parameter of a fixture that's live in Q stack. So say you have this running and there's a scene where you want the intensity to go down and you want to be able to control this on your own instead of making a cue for that. You can store an inhibitive and this allows you to control the intensity of that light or color or anything else that you could think of without having to run it in the programmer, it could be on a fader for you to control separately. 
So your queue's running. Now you want it to shut off so you can actually run other queue stacks that you have going. The quick and simple way to do this is double click on your queue stack here, and the little stop button shows up right there. You click that, it has stopped. Simple as that. So that was a basic overview of storing queues on Martin, MPC, and Onyx. If you want to get more in detail with this software, make sure to check out our other videos.